Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I know that you got a couple of these record planes. And show the camera. Got a really good deal on it at the green big box store. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I paid $21.39. Wait a minute. Is that including the tax? You betcha. So it's about 20 bucks you pay for that, right? Yep. Okay, so A, record's a great name. And it says here, fine adjustment and precision ground base. Okay, so you're heading out of town for the holiday season? Yep. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go over this with Chris and we'll let you know all about it when you get back. Sounds good. Thanks, Edge. Stay tuned, everybody. Okay, over the years I've refurbished quite a few hand planes. My dad had an antique tool business and he used to refurb hand, refurbish hand planes. So when I saw this record, I went, ooh, that's a great brand name. But the red flag went up when he told me he paid $20 for this, or $21.39 with tax. And I was so suspicious, okay? Because guess what? My dad gave me this number seven record. It's, it's uh, my jointa, I love it. Hey, guess what I did? I replaced it with a Hawk blade, okay? Worth every penny. Now, this is a 60 and a half that was given to me years ago. It's great, honed perfect. It's a killer blog plane. So, when I looked at this, record number four that Big D gave me. I was like, wow, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, it's inoperable out of the clamshell plastic. Uh, I can see and it ticks me off because not to get so romantic or off on a high, uh, high note like this, but there's a reason you spent $300 on the Lee Nielsen number four. It's worth every daggone penny. And I'm going to take this over to the bench and I'm going to show you how it is not able to work out of the clamshell. And you're going to see me step by step take this brand new supposedly hand plane and make it, hopefully I can, make it a user for Big D while he's on vacation. So I'll stop here and then we'll start picking this apart. So the first thing I did when I took it out of the plastic, I looked, I go, boy, that's the wrong way to package this. Look at that blade sticking all the way out. So I took the fine adjuster and I, I moved it and I went, wait a minute, that's as far back as it come. It comes. So then automatically I said, oh, the frog, and I'll show you what the frog is right now, is sitting too far forward, by the way. That's the lever cap. That's the cap iron right there. Okay. Wait till you see how this is. And I looked, and as we can get a good shot in here, huh, the frog was actually set halfway decent. But then I thought, wow, I can't adjust that back. So guess what? Right away I'm going to say the blade's too long. This is inoperable. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, so some people may think that you could take this frog, see these two screws right here, and move it back. Okay, but there's a problem that's inherent. You see this blade? That always has to sit flush on this frog. And if there's a space between the throat here, let me just get my ruler, that's your throat. That's your throat here, the f okay, <clears throat> to the front of the frog. That should be even. That's how I was taught. Okay, I can move it forward to reduce the gap of the throat to prevent tear out. But because the blade will still be supported by the frog. If there's space, and I have found this between here and here, and as I move it back, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me grab my screwdriver. Okay, and there's a lot of things that on this hand plane. If I move it back here, you see the, by the way, there's, once again, there's no adjustment screw back here. Okay, if we look here, there's an adjustment screw. So I can move that forward to decrease my, my throat. <laughs> so it's all manual is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna bring it back here. And if I do this, my blade now sits on the front here and there's a gap here and it's not seating on the frog. In other words, you're gonna get chatter and you will get a lousy cut. So I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna to go to the bench and I wanna show you 
where the frustration lies on this plane. Okay, so the blade is seating halfway decent on the frog as best as possible. You'll see what's wrong with the blade in a few minutes. Okay, the cap iron is tightened down to within a sixteenth of the front edge and I got my lever cap here tightened. Okay, <laughs> you can also see here where the cap iron is bowed. So, here's once again, someone goes and buys one of these. I have this fully adjusted forward. Okay, so I, I can't retract it any more than that is what I'm getting at. If I, if I move this fine adjuster back, it's just gonna keep going forward. So I'm gonna push it. This is, this is the best adjustment I have out of that clamshell. And look at this. So over the years, people have brought me their hand planes. Whether they bought a Junker or their grandfather, or it was out of their grandfather's attic, or they went to an auction and got it. And I take an old hand plane and I make it into really good uses. And that's another video we'll do eventually. But this is a different animal. Someone goes and buys this at a big box, takes this, it's plastic handles and everything, but goes like this and go, I can't get this to work. A, they might return it, or B, they may just say, I hate hand planes, where hand planes are indispensable in a shop. So, do I have my work cut out for me? Yes, I'll show you things to look for. I have to take this blade and grind it all the way back. Okay, that's one of them, but I have to show you all the other things. Chris, come over here for a second. I wanna, I wanna point something out. Because when I did setting up for this, I did some setting up for this over the weekend. And this is the one that really got me. It said precision ground base, okay? The sole, okay, and the sides. Okay, now an initial pass, this is out of the box. An initial, because I mill these. Not perfect, but pretty close. Look at the, look at the high spots, and hopefully we can see that in the video. This is, <laughs> I always want to say define precision ground. So let's stop here and let's go to the next segment where I'm going to show you how to grind a, the sole of this. Okay, so I dismantled uh, the blade, the cap iron, and the lever, lever cap. And we're gonna have to sharpen this, but I'm gonna grind it back quite a bit. Uh, one of the things I wanna show you, this is my lapping plate. And there's a reason you buy a hand plane with a good blade, a definite thickness. Look at this blade. It's got a warp to it, okay? Look, it's cambered, okay? I don't think, I, it's not that I'm gonna get that out of it, but I wanna see the reaction after I get everything done. I'm gonna lap the back here. We'll take care of that in a little while. Also the cap iron. Okay, I'm feeling, whoopsie, I'm feeling burrs on here where we're gonna lap this, but look how coarse ground that is. It's like two bevels on there. So we gotta do some grinding. And I don't have my square handy, but I, that doesn't even look square to me. So that's important. Also, I've never seen this on a hand plane, but you'll see how this is bent up. So there's a lot of fettling we have to do with all of this, but I'll step you through the process. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to grind the sole and the sides. All right, we're gonna make this nice for Big D. And I'm also feeling here, okay, here and here. This is not bad, okay, but back here, I'm going to file that ever so slightly. You wanna take a hand plane, and right here, they painted the surface. Sometimes I'll grind that down. I feel for burrs, but that's pretty good. We'll see where we are when we grind these sides. But I wanna, you wanna be able to grab a hand plane, and it all feels good. Um, we'll also work on the frog. I'll show you how to check the frog to make sure that that's milled flat because that's very important. So let's, uh, let's set up our lapping plate. We're going to start with 80 grit. I used to choose this four and a half inch presser sensitive adhesive backed. Uh, this is 80. We're going to step through 80 and then we'll do 120. The one thing you must do is check your plate for debris or uh, dust. I just cleaned this off, so I'm gonna put this on here now. I'll take it like this. I'll put it on here like this. I'll bring it here, 
And then what I'll do is I'll just take my knife and I'll cut it on the edge here. Now we're gonna do a lot of a grinding on this. So I'm gonna set up two strips of 80 grit here just because I know we're gonna go through quite a bit. And I'm gonna give you some, whoopsie, I'm gonna give you some tips on that as well. Okay, set that aside. So, you'll wanna do this, and I'll, I'll advise not to do this. Always put the frog in here, leave it in. Some people leave the iron and the cap iron and the lever cap in there. Um, I don't see the, the need for it. <clears throat> and the reason I do that is because if I don't have this tightened down, there could be, and, I, and I've done this before, I've honed it and I had a hollow here. And it's because the frog wasn't in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do an initial pass. I'll do the sole just to see where I'm gonna have to really concentrate. Now this is a time consuming son of a gun, but let's look at the bottom. Okay, now hopefully you're getting this, Chris. Okay, now this is kind of cool. I'm a little surprised. There's a slight hollow back here, but that's okay. That'll come out fairly quick. Right in here is where I look the majority of the time is right here, the throat. Okay, I just want to make sure that that is always perfect. So let's grind some more and see where we're at. Okay. Wow, that came out pretty daggone good. Okay, but you'll see where, for me, precision, their definition of precision ground is not precision ground for me. So, here's a tip that I wanna talk about. I've seen so many people do refurbishing videos and they take a brush, which I have, and I used to do this too, and go like this to remove this dust. Okay, because that's metal fibers. What I like to do, sounds funny, but I, when I do that, it goes up in the air because those are very fine. I just like to take a dust extractor. You see how that comes clean? And guess what? I'm not breathing that as it goes up in the air. And Chris isn't breathing it. So I always kind of like to have a dust extractor nearby. Okay. So I'm going to look over here again. And you know what? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, now let's look at this side here. I'm going to take it like this, and I'm just going to hold it like this, nice and steady. As this, if this comes out good, this might be a, a oh look how, and this is, this is okay. This is kind of normal, but Derek may want to use this on a a shooting board that we'll make next year for him. So I'll look at that. You know what? That's coming in pretty good. Okay. I'll do a little more there. Let's see how this side is. Okay. Okay. There's going to be a little more work on there. So I'm going to get that dust off of there. Let's do a little more on the sides. Okay. So in close inspection, we've, you'll see those grinding marks. My God, they must have ground this at 40 or 60. So you can see my scratch pattern here. This is 80. That's fine. This looks really good too. And this looks fairly good. So I went from 80 and like sharpening, we're going to lap this up and we'll get a decent polish on there. So we're going to go from 180. I mean, I'm sorry. We're going to go from 80. Then we're going to do 120. And then we'll do 220. And we'll see where we're at when we stop at 320. Okay, so I've put down 120 grit. And one of the things I want to make sure you understand is the, the hardest part is to grind out your hollows first. Okay, so that's why the 80 grit, and it's aggressive. But that's where you're going to spend your most time. The only thing I'm doing with 120 is removing those 80 grit scratch patterns. Okay, so it's, it's a very quick process. I'm just going to take it like this. Go back and forth. All right, and you're gonna see a finer scratch pattern appear. So I'm just gonna do it back and forth here. Am I putting a ton of pressure? Absolutely not. And I'll just 
take it here and I believe yep and my, my quick inspection look at that sole I got a 120 scratch pattern I'll vacuum that up and I'll do the sides yep yeah, that's my 120 scratch pattern I like it I'm not truly worried down there I just want to make sure I have a nice bearing surface polished up So we went 80, we went 120, we went 220, and now we're going to do 320. And we'll inspect it after. Remember, the only thing you're doing is removing what? With the 320, I'm removing the 220 scratch pattern. And you'll see how it's coming out nice. Okay, let me uh, vacuum that off. Before I go another step, I'm going to bring this over to the bench and that has gotten, these are okay still, but that has gotten really sharp. So let's take care of that. Okay, so I got a, a good file and what I'm gonna do is, I wish, you, I wish you could feel this in the video, but that's a wicked sharp edge. These aren't so bad, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hone that also with uh, 240. There's a slight burr here. So what I'm gonna do is just ever so slightly. Just start taking some of that off. In other words, going back and forth on a on a piece, okay, that sharp edge could cut in and cause cracks. So you just wanna take your time and go around and just knock it off. It's just one of those little fettling things you can do to make that hand plane a real winner. And once again, just a little 240 and just take it down, and that is starting to become really nice and smooth. And then we can do our final polish, and I'm gonna take this up a notch for Big D. Hopefully we can get that blade working nice. Yeah, that's kinda nice and smooth. You won't have any plain tracks. There it is. Okay, now, if this was, say, an older refurbished, like, check this out, like this number five I just redid. Okay, see this right here? I would actually hone that a little with a little 240, like this, just to knock that edge off. You want that hand plane really comfortable in your hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and ever so slightly just go back and create what is known as a slight chamfer, but it isn't too much. And that's starting to feel good. This is painted, so that's kind of nice. I'll feel that. They actually ground that, which is okay. If not, I would have ground that as well. And just take it like this. It won't affect anything. So that just feels great, and that's nice. No burrs. Looks good. Big D, when you're watching this, you're going to see where Chris and I took the extra step for this. I'm going to bring this into a decent polish for you, um, just to make it a real winner. So. I got some wet dry paper. I got 600, uh, oh, sorry, I should have organized it 15 and 2000. And it's just simple. This is my 320 grit. I'm gonna put it right here and I'm just gonna take it. And I'm gonna move it back and forth on there. And I'm gonna go like this. Okay, I'm starting to see it heat up a little. I'll knock it off. I'll come this way with it. And what, the only thing we're doing is getting away or getting rid of what? Look at that, look how that's polishing up. I'll just do the sides real quick. I'll just work that abrasive. I'll set that aside here. And then I'll go 1500. Hello, starting to mirror polish. <laughs> Hopefully that bladel and that cap iron will work for us. <clears throat> Yes, there's a lot of work associated with this. Just take your time, enjoy the process. <clears throat> Big D, you owe me a rack of beer. <laughs> Hello, can you say shiny? It's coming out nice.
Let's clean up the sides. Let's polish that side. Okay, so the next thing I want to address is the frog and to see how dead flat that is. That's a very important because that's where the blade is supposed to rest. But one of the tips that I've learned over the years is there's a lot of little screws. And when you're, this is brand new, but when you have to descale these, okay, get a, a little magnetic tray like this, okay, so you don't lose any parts. And I'm gonna take this off. I'll say it again, and I'll probably say it at the end, one of the unfortunate pieces to this record plane is that it doesn't have the screw here to move it forward or back for adjustment. It's all by hand. Okay, so you'll see in other videos that we do on hand plane basics and Big D had some great ideas for 2022. In fact, this is probably coming out in 2022, so Big D wants to learn about all kinds of hand plays. So let's get this good for him. Uh, okay, see that? And there's a couple of washers that go missing, so we'll take that off. I'm gonna take this lever cap screw off too. Uh, reach back, always make sure you have plenty of paper towels. Okay, and the one thing I always do, especially if it's an older uh, hand plane that you get at a garage sale or whatever. <clears throat> I always descale this. This is one of those pieces that's really imperative. It's dead flat and I take a good straight edge and I check the whole thing. You know what's amazing is that is ground and I check it from angle to angle here and this is actually ground. I don't need to touch this. The other parts I look at are right here because this is where they mate in here. Okay, and these are actually pretty good. They're clean, so I'm not gonna mess with them. Uh, I check this. If it's an older one, I make sure it's ground. And you know what I feel right there? I feel a very slight burr. So what I'm gonna do is just take a couple of seconds. I'll grab my plate. I still get 320 on there. And what I'll do is I'll just feel it like this. Okay, and I'll drag it like this just to knock that burr off. And that's all it takes, a little one more time. I wanna make sure that, that burr doesn't impede anything. And I'll drag it like that and it's gone. That's all it was. And I'll just go like this and knock the burr off of there. Okay, it's just a simple back and forth, but that make a big difference? It could. So I'll just take it like that. So the frog's good. Okay, so what the first thing we're gonna do with the blade, well, there's a, quite a few things we'll get into to this. I'm feeling the edges, we're gonna knock all those off. We're gonna make it, put a chamfer around this. We'll take this, make it nice and smooth, all right? But one of the things I wanna do, before we take it to the Tormac to grind back the bevel, okay, because that's a really lousy grind on there. Uh, and we want to make sure it's exactly 25 degrees. That's why the tool may. I'm going to lap the back of this. And remember when I said this had a, you can, you can tell about the blade. See how it's a little high right here? Okay, it's because it's, it's got a camber to it. Okay, so you might want to go get a replacement blade Big D right off the bat. Okay, because this is a very thin blade. But I'm going to just take it here and hold it. I don't have to do the whole back. I just need to, I usually try to do just the first half to a, see that? And I'm actually feeling the burr in the front of that, but that's not where I care about. So I'm just gonna try to take that right in there. Okay. I'm gonna work with this, see what I can do. Okay, so that's probably the first five millimeters in. We just work it a little bit more on this. This is 80 grit. And then I'll take it to the 120 just to lap the back. I just find on the flat, I can do it really quick. So there you go. And I'm not really concerned about in there. Cause I get like, like I said, first like five millimeters in there. Good. Okay, so I get it at 320, but remember, I have to grind this bevel back at least at least two, three, maybe even four millimeter. So it actually has travel on that frog with that fine adjuster. So I'm not taking too heavy a cut right from the get go. <laughs> so 
just gonna work this and polish this up, that lap that back. Okay, so the back is lapped. Now what I wanna do is I wanna address this, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect before I do my bevel. I'm just gonna run it a few times on there just so that becomes smooth, okay? Get some of those milling marks. Now I'm also gonna do this. I'm just gonna take it just to knock that rough burr off, just like that. Oh, you can really feel it up there. Okay, and just take my time doing it. Not getting the hold of that point, but you can see it's already starting to feel good. I'm also gonna do this. Okay, it just takes two seconds. That way there, because you're gonna be messing with this and that's got a slight curve to it. So I'm just gonna take it like this and once again, just work that chamfer like this. Knocking it off like this. And that feels great. And then I'll just take a little hand sandpaper and knock a little more off. So one of the things I wanna make sure that you check when you are sharpening a blade, uh, especially a plain blade, you want this face to be 90 to your edge. And Chris and I were betting whether this was square or not. Come here, check this out. I'm gonna take a really good precise square and bring it right down. Hopefully we can see this. This thing is out quite a bit. Okay, and it's on this edge. So what I'm gonna do, it's a good thing we're grinding this because I wanna grind this to 90 for Big D. So I'm just gonna do this first. I'm gonna go, that's the one, that's not where I gotta concentrate, I gotta grind it. So it's gonna look really weird as I'm grinding this on the Tormac, but then the end result, it's gonna be square. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna darken this. Okay. And something that Chris noticed, that this lapped really quick. Okay, and you're gonna see where that bevel comes up really quick and we got to reduce it remember about two to three millimeter <laughs> this is really bad tool steel <laughs> in other words if it goes too quick you don't have a great hardness on this so once again I'll say it I'll say it I'm gonna say it at the end it's well worth buying a hawk blade for your um, for your, uh, some of your tooling that you have because it's a thicker blade. My Lee Nielsen's all have come with a substantial blade. So that you pay, you get what you pay for. So let's get sharpening. Okay, so I've adjusted my tool Mac. I'm gonna start grinding back and you're gonna see how out of square this is where it's right here. Look, I'm starting to grind it where it needs to be exactly where I want it. So you'll see over here, I'm barely touching it. That means it's out of square. So I just made sure with this jig that I have everything possible to get me that 90 degrees. Um, I'm just gonna take my time and I'm gonna grind it back to that blue line. So there you go. Okay, so one of the things I do is I'm gonna periodically check the blade, okay? I'm gonna check for that burr that's, oh yeah, it's already appearing, but of course not down here. So let's turn it over and look. And remember, this is gonna be a, a long process because I wanna grind it back enough so he has plenty of travel. And you can see, obviously, look, see? See how we're grinding here and that slight burr over here, that's where your high spot is. So that's what you get when you get one of those bag and specials. Derek better be happy with this. Okay, so we're at square. I like the result. Big D, you got a square blade. Okay, because um, that's where it was off last time, if you remember. I ground it back to that blue spot. Hopefully I've ground it back enough. I can always go back to it. I've taken it from the 220 grit. I re uh, graded the stone to 1000. And now I'm gonna hone it and we'll see uh, how it all goes together. Okay, so let's check the shot mess for Big D. Oh, I think he's gonna like that. That's a lot different blade that came with it. <laughs> cool. 
Okay, so this blade is wicked sharp. All right, we honed it. It's ready to go, I believe. The next thing we had to work on is the chip breaker. And when I first started inspecting this, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> of course it's stamped, but it was, there's no refinement on it. So this burr is holding it away. There's another burr here where the threads are. Okay, top and bottom. So I'm gonna file those, you'll see. And right here, I need to get this. This has to mate this front edge perfectly to break the chips that come off. All right, so I'm gonna do some polishing here and I'm gonna refine this here. I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna take it to the abrasive I have here. And boy, look how that's not, it's sitting proud. So I'll just take it like this and I'll do both of these burrs simultaneously. Those are almost off. Okay, almost off. Okay, so those are flush. That's flush, that burr's gone. I'm gonna take that burr right there. And what's weird on this, I've never seen this, that is angled back. So I'm gonna have to take it like this and just get it right here and knock that burr off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna take these striations out here and I'm just gonna take it. Now, remember, or if you don't know, okay, this isn't perfectly flush. There's a slight angle to it. So I just kind of angle it off here. I feel that flat and I bring it like this and it's already starting. You'll see those striations starting to disappear. And you can see, see that right there? That means it wasn't even even in the beginning. So just a few more polishes back and forth at this slight angle and then I'll take it up. See, now we're coming into where I want it. And, that, and this is 120 grit. So I'll take it 120, 220, and 320. Just like that. And you'll see how that is right there. So I'll take it down a little bit more. Much better, much better. Okay, so the other concern I have, because that chip breaker is gonna come right up to the front there, that breaks the chip, okay, from from and you don't want it to go underneath that's why it needs to be a perfect mating surface so what i want to do is also right here there's also a blunt edge and i don't want any catches is the catch or two there so what i'm going to do is take it to my strop so one of the things i've always done is just this front edge i've taken it to my strop and i've just done this okay give it a quick polish and you're gonna see how that comes right up that way there, that that chip will just curl up over the, just like that. I'm gonna remove this burr, because there's a blunt edge right there, and there you go. Okay, so I have the chip breaker. It's all honed, it mates perfectly with the blade, but I have been fettling with this, trying to figure out a few things on it. And I finally realized, I have it all tightened up, I have it down to within a sixteenth where I want it, okay? But because of the bow of the cap iron, check this out, look what it does to the blade, you see that? Okay, and when I put the lever cap on there, it puts it like this and it's too much torque, it doesn't seat on the frog properly, so we're getting an extensive amount of chatter. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this apart so you can see this. And I'm gonna go back and forth. The culprit of this hand plane pretty much was the length of the blade was too long for the unit. This blade is wicked thin, okay? But look at the distance here. Let me bring it up so you can see it. Okay, so when I pull that cap, up, that chip breaker in, it bows the blade. So let's see what I can do. It causes a lot of chatter is what it does. What I'm figuring on this with the chip breaker is if I take it to reduce the space between here and here, when I tighten it, I don't over tighten it, right? I'm gonna bring it in here and ever so slightly, just pull this back ever so slightly to see if I start to get, all right, I think this is gonna work. Let's check it out. So let's continue, but I took a break and I really had to think about this hand plane. And the reasoning for it is it wasn't working up to my expectations. 
So I thought about it and I thought about it and here's the culprit. <laughs> okay, I, and let me explain the process because you can do this and it, it makes a lot of sense to me now. Um, I went online and I looked at Ron Hawk's um, website because I knew that this chip breaker was the culprit for a variety of reasons, but boy did I learn. Okay, and I want to impart some information to you. His website's fantastic. His product is fantastic. I was going to buy a blade and a chip breaker. The chip breaker's $30, the blade's 40 bucks, but worth every penny. Every time I bought a Hawk blade or one of the chip breakers, they're priceless. Okay, but I wanted Big D to start right, so this is what I'm going to tell you. Check this out. <laughs> this was funny. I was here Saturday on uh, an afternoon and I saw the chip breaker and he gives you these measurements because he says not these don't fit or these fit Stanley's but it may be a non Stanley so double check it. So I came out here and I started measuring from this schematic this chip breaker. Okay and I told you earlier okay that this has got a slight tilt to it. And I found out later what that was for. It was to give clearance for the lateral adjuster as it was set up. And I started thinking, I go, well, that is crazy. So then I started, I started measuring this. And lo and behold, I went and grabbed a Stanley number four that I had. I have several of them. And I grabbed the chip breaker and I went like this and I went, okay, now I know it'll work perfect. Okay, so this is me being, duh. <laughs> I grabbed the chip breaker from my Stanley number four and I put it on Derek's Big D's record. Oh my God. <laughs> Look how it mates up perfectly. Look, I have one on here. Okay, it mates up perfectly. It works great. There's no, when I put the leather cap on here, hopefully you guys can see this right. When I put pressure here, it doesn't take the blade and do this. So, in other words, it was an okay cut, but it was more of a scraping cut. Now, check this out. I have this set up, and now we are getting an unbelievable shaving from this. It's unreal how well this works. And I wish you had, we had feel of vision here because this is glass smooth. So I just want to point that out. It's not always the blade. It's not always the frog. It's not always the sole or the sides uh, 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 ground perfectly. Sometimes it's just something this simple and boy did we work it, didn't we? And it's unreal. So let's do a wrap up. Big D's got a nice hand plane. Okay, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up fairly quickly because I have learned so much going through this. I've been refurbishing hand planes for many, many years. And I've been using hand planes for quite a few years as well. In fact, I think my Lee Nielsen four and a half is about 30 years old. Okay, so this is that $20 find at the big box. And I'm gonna mention out of the box, it was not operable. And that was the frustration for me because I think about people going to buy a hand plane and say, I wanna get into hand planes. And this was inoperable from the get go. So in saying that, we figured we put about, <laughs> I put about four hours of sweat equity and I have a lot of equipment to bring this into a usable hand plane. Um, from grinding the sides to the sole, to making sure the frog is set properly, grinding back on my Tormac system took quite some time because I had to go back about four millimeters on the blade to get it right. And then honing and polishing, working with the cap iron. So, <laughs> record is a killer brand. Stanley, find a good Stanley if you want to refurb. We're going to be refurbing planes this year. Big D wants some, some garage sale finds to bring them into uh, usable. Or 
what you can do is what you've seen in here is I've had to spend, and I'm going to say it right now, an extra $30. I didn't spend $30. I used one of my Stanley four and a half um, chip breakers in there. Could you get it fairly good? Yes, but my motto is okay is not okay for me. Okay, my time is worth money and I want my hand tools to work properly. So, go spend your money, 30 bucks on a hot chip breaker. It's worth every penny on there. So now you're at $50. So, here's the quick wrap. <laughs> it's so easy. Go buy yourself a quality hand plane. And there's a, a bunch out there, like uh, you can get a Wood River, you can get a Veritas. Oh my God, I got tons of Veritas planes. And you can go and get a Lee Nielsen, and that is what I prefer, I always have. So, like we always say at the end of the videos, whoop, be positive and stay sharp. I really hope this video helps you in your choices.